Hello everyone, my name is Jen and welcome to The Book Refuge. Hello my friends, welcome to another taboo romance recommendation video and today I'm touching back on a topic that I have definitely filmed a few videos about before so if you check out my taboo playlist which I'll have linked up there you can find more of these recs because I'm not going to make this video too long just because again I've really talked about these tropes before and some of these books are a little bit like older to me than others so I don't remember completely everything you know that happens but hopefully this will be one of my quicker videos you know I used to do that it's been a long time but my like trope videos used to be a bit quicker um, I know I know people tell me they don't mind them being long but like sometimes I mind sometimes I just want them to be quick they get you the recs that you need I'll have the links all down in the description you're here for some spicy dubious consent some CNC and we go with that now just to be clear there is a difference between dubious consent and CNC and it is a pretty significant di difference so I do have have these actually split up kind of between those two so that if you really don't want to read dubcon because you're like I don't want to see like kind of that coercive part you want it to be completely consensual then we can um, you can stay away from that right so I have six I believe six of these that are dubious consent and six of them that are CNC I think we'll see now just as a reminder for people in case they don't know what the difference is right maybe this is the first one you've seen so dubcon means dubious consent this is a part of kind of this umbrella of kind of a spectrum here so there's non-con also known as grape um and some people enjoy reading that. I have enjoyed a few in my time as well. Um, this can happen in kidnapping situations or in trafficking situations, um, but when they actually end up together, right? Then there's dubious consent, or let's say he's just being kind of forceful or he coerces her into a situation, but she generally is okay being pushed into what's happening to her, right? So she might be resisting by the end, but she's into it by later on, right? And then there is CNC. CNC is a completely consensual situation where you've decided beforehand, not right as you're doing it, that you want to act out a forced scene, right? Those are completely different. That's why grape is on one side and like grape fantasy <laughs> or CNC, they're on opposite ends of each other and dubious consent can be is in the middle kind of, right? But CNC is, I want to, I want you to throw me down and I'm going to say no, but I want you to keep going and you have a safe word and everything's in place, right? Um, and also quite a few of these books, there are things that start as non-con or dubious consent and they become CNC because they discover that they like it. So that's why I said there's quite a spectrum of all of this. So if you want to go even more into that, one of the videos in this playlist is where I like really dive into it and like where... Oh, I'm not a psychologist, of course, but like where it is said some of those fantasies come from and why we won't shame anyone and why I won't stand for anyone in my comments saying this is bad. This is fantasy. There's nothing that's bad. Okay. There's nothing in these books that can hurt anyone. And especially if you know what the trigger warnings are going in, there's nothing that's damaging to people in these books because you're choosing to read them, right? Um, it's not fun to be surprised with things though. So there definitely is that. First up, I want to mention uh, Brutal Ambition. And this one, I put in dubious consent because he does kind of coerce her into letting him do things with her. This is by no means the, uh, the most intense of Sam Mariano's for this, like a lot of her books have dubious consent or straight up the other one as well. But in this one, we have our heroine, um, just forgot her name, it's been a while, Bryn, and Killian is the uh, love interest. And she gets rescued by him from being sacrificed, from being a virgin sacrifice, he rescues her. And he rescues her. I won't get into like the full details of that. I've talked about this book many times, but he brings her back to his home and she's like, I want to go home. And he's like, no, the people who took you, they know who you are. They know where you live. If you go home, they're going to come and kill you because you've seen their faces. You know who they are. And she doesn't like, she pushes back on this and he's like, girl, I'm not letting you go because then everything I just did tonight would be a waste. And so he forces her to stay. And then in forcing her to stay, he kind of is telling her like, I think you owe me. I think you owe me for saving you. And so their first kind of encounter, he does kind of 
convince her to give it to him and eventually can convinces her to give him her virginity as well um and then he decides that he wants to keep her and we go from there so like this one this is a spin-off from the coastal elite series it fits in kind of when dare and aubrey dare and aubrey are going to college okay then i'm just going to show all three of these we have the hockey god series by s massery now these ones are kind of in the middle ground because there are a few of them that start very heavily with dubcon there's one of them that straight up they're at a party and they decide to do a cnc scene together and then later on he finds out who she is and comes after her but let's see we'll go through these ones real quick he's the hockey god and she's the one that got away so this one is brutal obsession and it says um finishing college playing the best sport on earth um, get you drafted. My senator father is proud of me. Oh, okay. So this is the one where um, he hits her with his car and she is a ballerina and he like breaks her leg and basically means she can't dance anymore. And he is, you know, going to get in trouble for that. He gets out of it because he's a senator's son. And then he kind of hates her. He blames her for the way his life has changed because he hit her with his car. <laughs> so this is one then he decides... She, when she ends up transferred to his school, he's just really pissed about that because he's like, I can't get away from you. Like, why? So he definitely isn't happy about that. Then there is Secret Obsession. This one is, he's a hockey god and she's the one he can't have. Now, this one is the first one I read and I actually still like this one the most because this one is his brother's ex. But here's the thing. He liked her first and his brother knew that and he was biding his time this hero let's see if it says his name right here miles he's biding his time and then his brother on a bet swoops in and starts dating this girl and he's really only dating her just because and so finally um they break up and he's like, I'm not wasting any other time. I'm going after her. And so now he's stalking her and following her around and sneaking into her room and proving that he's the one that she's really meant to be with. So there's this one. And then there is Twisted Obsession. He's a hockey god and she's the one that got away. Now this one is a amnesia. This is a forbidden romance. It's an older woman. She was actually his teacher and she wakes up in the hospital with no memories and she shipped off to Denver to live with a distant cousin who knows nothing about her and so if her family can't remember her who will um, she doesn't expect a gorgeous hockey player 10 years younger to show up and know things about her that he shouldn't know so he is now like when he finds out she's alive and found out where she is she doesn't know who he is and he kind of is using this as a second chance to win her over this time without her knowing that he was her teacher but you know that's only going to hold out for so long like things are going to come crumbling down in regards to that okay then we have one that i mean at this point everybody knows that this is dubious consent um some might even consider the beginning non-con they might um and there's even some controversy because the re-release of this book is going to change a little bit of the wording to make it more clear that this is dubious consent now people might have opinions about that after hearing about the changes that are being made to this one i think it's a good idea just because for we want this book here i'll show it we want this book to have the biggest audience that it can okay at least i do it's fine if other people don't feel that way but i do and this book when you read it, when you get further on into the book, you do learn that the heroine did kind of want what he was doing, but she's an unreliable narrator in the beginning and she needs him to force her into it so that she will let herself go and let it happen. But this begins with her on a cliff, possibly thinking about killing herself and then Killian, yes, that's a popular name for a bad boy. He stops her from killing herself, but then he demands payment and that payment is in the form of a blowjob. Okay. And he's threatening to basically push her off the cliff if she won't give this to him. Um, so yeah, this one maybe starts as non-con is what we see. But as we continue with the story, and now he's her stalker, and he's obsessed with her, and he doesn't know why. He's a true psychopath, by the way, and he's like, why am I so interested by this weak little girl who I all of a sudden want to be with, like, all the time? And as he spends more time with her, 
she reveals eventually that she did want what was happening and he reveals that I know I wouldn't have actually pushed you that hard if I knew you didn't want it so a few things that are supposedly being changed in God of Malice is that those thoughts that she already has, everybody already has, are just going to be shown to us better in the beginning. So some people still might be mad, but I'm like, you guys don't even know how many of the books that are redone, like get some stuff changed to them. And nobody notices enough to say anything about it, right? This isn't a case of Lisa Claypez, which if you don't know, they like neutered her heroes, like literally like tame down a lot of her heroes when they re-release them. That's not what's happening with this one. There's nothing that he did that's being drawn back. They're adding some thoughts. They're not cutting out him still shoving his cock down her throat on this clip. Like all that's still happening. She's just now going to think like, why am I so into this? Which is what you, the person reading the book, are thinking as well. So anyway, sorry, that was a random defense, but I'm like, I understand when I first heard it was changing, I was mad too. But I've talked with my friend who works at Bloom and she explained to me like what was actually happening with it. And I'm like, oh, well, that's not that big a deal. I more so wonder, I'm like, if nobody had said anything, how many people would have really like noticed that is my thing, right? Because I've read that book two times. I mean, I might have noticed if I reread, but would I? I don't know. So then there is The Wallflower by J.L. Beck. This is book one in a series, Oak Mount Elite. And this one is Maybelle Jacobs. And she ends up being convinced to like go to this party with her friend and doesn't realize that there's literally like this hunt going on. And if you complete the hunt, you win money, which she very much needs money. And if you lose, though, the person who catches you gets to do whatever they want to you right there. And so our male love interest in here, um, Drew, he wants to get her so that he can fuck her brains out and do whatever he wants to her. And she wants the money because she, she needs that. And so he is going to risk, uh, he's going to try to like break her and get her for himself. So it's crazy. Anyway, this one was wild. Like, I don't know what else to say. This one was crazy. And then once he like is able, once he like does that to her, now he is like stalking her and he wants her and he's going to make her like be his girl. So, you know, more possessive craziness there. Okay. Then we have one, a hunger like no other. So this one has a very interesting type of dubious consent slash kind of a forced encounter here because this one, this is the first book in the uh, Immortals After Dark. It's getting re-released soon, which is cool. And this one we have Lachlan McGreeve, who's the leader of the Lycae, and he has been trapped beneath, I believe it's Paris, for years. And he finally gets the motivation to literally gnaw his own leg off to get him out of his shackles because he senses his fated mate above him in the streets. And so he's able to get free and he goes and finds her. Um, now in here, the Lycae are absolutely like feral enemies of, um, of the vampires. And he discovers that his mate is half Valkyrie, half vampire. So after having been tortured and like mutilated for all these years, he's not in the best mental state when he gets his hands on her. And he does go a bit too far because he's so angry at her, you know, just at vampires in general. He hates her for it. But yet this is his mate. So his body is like telling him to mate with her all the time. So it isn't an excuse. And she definitely gives him absolute like hell for doing that to her. But I just love how... Like, I just love how they, like, work through that eventually in this one. But it is a, there's a pretty hot scene when he's forcing her to do stuff because he honestly just can't stop himself. And again, also, he hates vampires. And so he's angry that he's attracted to her. It's a very weird, toxic mess there, for sure. Now we have um, Mila Kane. We have Unholy Vows. This one, I love this one. This is, I think this is Renata, right? Or Renato, sorry. This is Renato and uh charlie and this one is a forced marriage and because her sister 
knows some stuff she shouldn't and her sister's threatening to go to the police and so he's like I need to neutralize the threat so he forces her older sister Charlie to marry him and become his wife and he's going to need heirs eventually so he forces her to marry him but he doesn't like immediately force his body on her but he definitely pushes his sexy advantage to get her in his bed and once she's there man he is uh he's going for it. So yeah, this one is a forced marriage, age gap, dark mafia romance with a jealous, possessive Italian boss, anti-hero, and the feisty young nurse that wandered unwillingly into his dangerous world. So yeah, it's so good. It's so good. Okay, now we have a couple that are definitely more like CNC for sure. We have Desperate Measures, which I know I've put in other of my videos too, but I feel I love bringing this one back up, especially with the beautiful covers. So this one is a reimagining of Jasmine and Jafar. And I also love bringing this one up because this is the very first book that I realized CNC was happening in it, which is just crazy because their first encounter, he has just like overthrown her father and he's taking over, um, her father's like, I think they're like districts or whatever in this world. And she is like a spoil of war. So she tries to run, he catches her and he tells her, he's like, if you don't use your safe word, like I'm going to fuck you right now. And she doesn't say it, but she keeps saying no. And he's like, that's not your safe word. So literally like on the floor, right after it, he's like, screwing her and she loves it so super sexy katie robert does a good amount of cnc as well then we also have uh broken beginnings by cleo evans this one actually surprised me because this is kind of like a small town suspense in a little way and once these two start dating each other she shares with him some of her sexual desires and he's like that sounds fun so this one is probably the most wholesome of all the ones I've recommended like this one isn't even a dark romance it's not um, just once they are together and starting to sleep with each other she says like I want to say no sometimes and I want you to still do it and he's like sounds good do we have a safe word and then they go for it. So if a lot of these sound too intense for you, I definitely suggest that one. And then finally, the one I want to recommend is actually Lights Out by Navessa Allen. Now this one's just going wild right now. It's been re-released as a traditionally published book. The audiobook is out. Um, it definitely has Butcher and Black ver Bird vibes. So I know that's what a lot of people have been loving about it. And in this one, this is also a stalker romance, but it's one of the more like lighthearted ones. So he is creeping on her. He is stalking her. But he wants her to like know that he is because he wants a chance with her. But it also is funny because in the beginning of this, his roommate is the one who is like, they're like friends with benefits. So his roommate and the girl, they're like friends with benefits. And when they break up, he uses it. It's his time to go for it. So he actually has an alter ego where he wears a mask and does like thirst trap TikTok videos. It's not called that, but you know what it is. The guys in the mask who like do sexy things that way. And she's one of his fans. And like he knows that she's his fan. And so one day when he's ready to start revealing himself, he, when she's at work, she's a nurse. And so she's working overnight. He sneaks into her house and masturbates on her bed. And so when she like watches the video, she realizes that is her room and now she's freaking out. And so she goes to her friends with benefit to ask if his roommate will help her try to track the guy who is stalking her. Cause she's just like not going to fuck around. <laughs> and so he's being asked to stalk himself. And once they start talking with each other, she kind of figures out pretty quickly that it's him and he's like, look, I'm not trying to hide it. I'm super into you. I love everything about you and I want to be your man. And there goes from there. They play a lot of different games together. There's lots of sexy stuff in here, including, I believe they play a version of like her sleeping and him sneaking in and like having his way with her type of thing. So, 
Okay, I hope that fills up your cup for some naughty recommendations for a while. These are all spicy ones that I just enjoy so much. So let me know what you think, some of your favorites. Like I said, I have others within this that you can check out. I'll have links to all of these down below so you can snag yourself a copy here. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.